Here is the AMD RX 9060 XT, and this is the RX 9060 XT. And in this video, I want to answer the most important question, which is better, the 9060 XT or the 9060 XT? In all seriousness, we are comparing these two cards, but besides the little sticker on the back, you would really struggle to know that there were, these were in any way different. The single difference between these cards is that this one has 8GB of VRAM and this one has 16. Actually, hold on. No, no, no. This one has the, the 8 and this one has 16. Who cares? Anyway, what we're doing here is testing the cards out at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, and monitoring the FPS and VRAM usage. So let's get into it, starting with the FPS data. I'll kick things off with CS2 on low settings. At 1080p, man this thing rips. 532 and 540 FPS for the two models at 1080p on low settings, which is excellent. And with such a small difference between the two, it's hard to argue that the 16 gig card is truly better here. At 1440p, there is an ever so slight difference which flips the other way, uh, with the 8 gig card being a couple of FPS ahead. Again, we're looking at over 500 FPS here, so both are more than good enough. At 4K, there is, again, a very slight difference between the two. The 16 gig card actually finds the extra performance here, again, bringing it back from 10EV, although, again, it's only a couple of FPS out of 350. Interestingly, the 1% lows are what take a bit more of a significant, although far from catastrophic, hit on the 8 gig card. It's 30 FPS lower though, which is the first notable difference we've seen so far. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p on medium settings is another tie. The 8 gig card ekes out a 2 FPS lead, but at 200 FPS, that's literally a 1% change, so I'd call that well within margin of error. At 1440p, there is Again, a 2 FPS difference, this time in the 16 gig card's favour. Again, oh, it's all basically identical, and at 4K, you guessed it, it's the same. There is just 2 FPS, or under 2% of difference. I'm sure that if you ran this test a thousand times per card, you would get functionally the same average on both. There just isn't much of a performance difference between them, at least right now. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has a slightly bigger difference at 1080p on high settings, but it still isn't exactly amazing. It's a 3.3% improvement from the 8 to 16 gig card, but that isn't going to be anywhere near notable. It's 216 FPS versus 223 FPS. Hardly game changing. At 1440p, again, there is just a 2 FPS gap, or 1.2%. Even the 1% lows are within 1% of each other. And at 4K, yeah, just 0.6 FPS average between them. These cars offer the exact same performance. Rainbow Six Siege on medium? Yep, 2 FPS. I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of tired of this, so I'm going to whiz through the results until we find an interesting one. 1440p? Literally 0.2% difference, or 2.1% in the 1% lows. 4K, 0.4% difference on average. The same. Hitman 3 on medium? Well, at 1080p, it's a 2 FPS gap. <laughs> at 4440p, it's even closer, with a slight advantage to the 8 gig card in the 1% lows. At 4K, it's the same. Although it's worth noting here that we're only getting 24 FPS on average, that'll be important later. Starfield is the next set of interesting results, because at 1080p it isn't interesting. Just, well, 2 FPS between them, but at 1440p there is a much more significant difference. There is actually a genuinely noticeable difference here, from 128 to 145 FPS average, and 10 FPS difference in the 1% lows. That's a 12.6% improvement from the 8 to 16 gig cards, or 15.2% if you look at the 1% lows. And that continues to 4K, where the gap is a little smaller, but still potentially noticeable at 92.5 versus 99.5 FPS, or 7.5%. 
It sure looks like Starfield on low anyway is CPU limited at 1080p, but 1440p and 4K seems to unlock that. Helldivers 2 on medium at 1080p is also somewhat interesting, showing a 5% difference even at 1080p. That's just shy of 10 FPS more on the 16 gig card. That's likely a worthwhile difference. The difference actually shrinks at 1440p to, you guessed it, 2 FPS. Amazing. At 4K, at least there is a slightly more significant 4.4% difference, although that is still only 3.5 FPS on average, so as I said, slight. For the sake of completeness, here is the 1080p average performance across both cards and all of the games. The 16 gig card is 1.5% faster across the board. Or in other words, functionally identical. At 1440p, it's just 1.2% faster across all games, which, again, means it's identical. At 4K, it's a 3 FPS gap, or 2.2%. Interestingly, it's the 1% lows that take the biggest hit here at 5.9%, or 6 FPS. So yeah, these cards, at these settings, regardless of resolution, offer functionally the same performance. Now let's look at VRAM usage. I'm going to condense things a little here, showing all three resolutions at the same time, with the 16 gig card in orange and the 8 gig card in green, and showing both the average and peak VRAM usage. This is from Hardware Info's D3D dedicated memory usage stat, which seems to be the most accurate measurement for AMD cards. So, starting with CS2, as you'd expect, we see a steady progression throughout the resolutions, with 1080p peaking at just shy of 6 gig, 1440p only being a touch more at 6.2, with only 4K being noticeably higher at 7 gig. Neither of these cards are at or over the 8 gig limit, although this is at low settings. I've tested it this way, as this is what I actually play these games at, the sort of settings wise, I call them sort of realistic settings, especially for this level of GPU horsepower. Surprisingly, Cyberpunk used less VRAM than CS2, with 1080p using just 5.2 to 5.5 gigabytes, 1440p being between 5.5 and 5.7, and 4K using up just 6.4 gigabytes. One thing that you will notice across the board here is that it seems like the 16 gig card actually consistently uses slightly less VRAM across the board. I can't really explain this one, but in basically every game, at every result, it's just slightly lower. If anyone has an explanation for that one, please do let me know in the comments down below. Helldivers 2 has a similar progression, although at 4K it has a higher spike to 7 gig or so, although on average it was more like 6 gig even at 4K. So again, not exactly near the limit of the 8 gig card. Hitman though, well, this is where it gets interesting. See, at 4K we get within a hair of the 8 gig limit, at 7.9 gigabytes on the 16 gig card, or 7.8 on the 8 gig card. Clearly we aren't over the limit here, but at anything higher than medium settings, you certainly would be. Except, remember how we were only getting 24 FPS on average on either card? Yeah. Well, you could change the settings to find a reason to need 16 gigabytes of VRAM right now. You're already down at unplayable levels of performance, so why would you? You would turn the setting down here, at 4K anyway, which should actually decrease VRAM usage. Interesting. Moving on to Siege, as expected, this uses a lot less VRAM, just 6GB or so at 4K. Again, that is at medium settings, so you could likely pump them up a bit more, but you'd struggle to find the need for more VRAM here, and in a game like Siege, latency and FPS trump visual quality for sure. As for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's another one that brushes the limit at 7.8 gigabytes on the 8 gig card, although VRAM usage is actually pretty high across the board, with 6.7 gigabytes of usage at 1080p. That's likely thanks to running at high settings, but the fact that even at 4K on high settings, we don't actually exceed the 8 gig cap, even on the 16 gig card, is again 
Interesting. And finally for Starfield, I was expecting much higher VRAM utilization, but surprisingly, no. Even at 4K, admittedly on low settings to get any amount of playable performance, we're using just 6.7GB of VRAM on the 16GB card, or 6.3 on the 8GB card. The difference between the average and maximum is also really close on this one. Likely because I'm only running around on New Atlantis during the benchmarking, I'm sure if I was properly playing Loading Simulator it would bounce around a bit more, but even then, like, Helldivers was all in the same mission, planet, and area, so who knows. So is the 16 gig 9060 XT better? Well, kinda? I mean, on performance alone, it's hard to argue it's a worthwhile investment, as you're looking at no more than 1 or 2% of extra performance. In terms of VRAM usage, Sure, at 4K on higher settings, you are likely to run close to the 8GB VRAM limit, but these aren't, you know, cards aren't 4K gaming cards. You will struggle to get decent performance at 4K on anything above medium settings. Hitman is a particularly bad experience at 4K on medium here, but without upscaling tech anyway, you will likely be limited to 100fps or lower uh, you know, on medium to low, and dipping below that as you go up in the settings. The argument for the 16 gig card gets even harder, because the 8 gig card can be had for a full £100 less than the 16 gig card. In fact, these gigabyte ones in particular are currently £110 apart, which is 40% more money for at most 2% more performance. Damn, that is a hard pill to swallow, and that's why I don't think you need 16GB of VRAM. Now, I know that most people will have just stopped watching there, because that opinion is utterly insane, because both Steve say you very much do. And it might surprise you to hear that I agree with them. The problem here is the context, which immediately gets stripped from the conversation into dumb sound bites like, I don't think you need 16GB of VRAM. So let me add the context back in. For these cards, at this point in time, with usable settings, you do not need the 16 gig version. You don't. The benchmarks I've shown here prove that. But for a higher end GPU, like a 70 class card for example, yeah, the 8 gig would be a limitation. And this is why context is so important. The GPU that the VRAM is tied to matters way more than the amount of VRAM because that determines what most people will use it for. If you're buying a 60 class card, I sincerely hope you aren't gaming at 4K. So who cares if at 4K on ultra settings you need you know, a handful of games use 9, 10, 12, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. No one is actually playing like that and hey if you are, there's a 16 gigabyte card sitting right here for you. At 1440p, which is where I would expect most people who buy these cards will actually play at, none of the games, even on higher settings, ran above I think like 6 gigabytes or so. Of course, this will change over time, and I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple years 8 gigabytes isn't enough for even 1440p. That's kind of the point of saving a hundred pounds right now, isn't it? Buy the cheaper one that performs identically, and by the time you actually run out of VRAM, you can get a two or three generation newer card, especially because for this class of card, you are much more likely to run out of GPU horsepower than you are of VRAM. If the price difference was considerably smaller, I would be much more open to suggesting that everyone should just go and buy the 16 gig card instead because, duh, it's the better card. But for almost 50% more money? God no! The future proofing aspect of 16 gigabytes of VRAM for this class of GPU is in no way worth that much money. But to be clear, for the right card, yes you absolutely need 16 gigabytes of VRAM or more. But for these mid-range cards? Nah. So that is my rant about 16GB and 8GB worth of VRAM and adding context to conversations.
If you're interested in either of these cards, I will leave some links in the description down below. Of course, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm sure many have already left comments having read the title and hearing that sound bite, but then not bothering to watch the rest of the video. So yeah, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below. You can also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my raving lunatic rants. There's plenty of other videos on the end cards as well you can check out. And otherwise, yeah. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.